Pull out your hose and grab your can. We're about to integrate another Pest Geek podcast. Hi, everybody. Frank Hernandez here, and welcome to the Pest Geek podcast, bringing you the latest information on pests, products, and politics from today's leading industry sources to help you start, manage, and grow your pest control business. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to the Pest Geek podcast. I am your host, Frank Hernandez. And we're going to be discussing Ekbom's syndrome, known as delusional parasitosis or dilutions of infestation. Now, this is one of those podcasts that is going to be very sensitive because if you're a technician, you will inevitably run into one of these cases. And I've already had two or three of them. They're not widespread, uh, but it is a a problem that every technician is going to run into. And I'm going to give you my experience on a couple of these that I've run into in the last 13 years of doing this. And um, it, it could be very challenging for the technician as well as the customer who's who's suffering from this. Um, and it, it, it really is taxing on the technician when he does run into one of these situations. Um, a lot of the time, um, you know, you have uh, a salesperson that went out and made a sale on something that was there. And, and it happens in our industry, unfortunately, commissioned salespeople get paid to make sales. They don't make get get paid to make real diagnosis or identification or problems a lot of the time, and basically they're going door to door, uh, you know. Hey, and the person says, "Yeah, I have this problem," and they sign them up, and the technician goes to do the job, and the technician can't find an insect to save their life to solve this problem, and he finds out he's dealing with something outside of his realm of expertise and his realm of something that he's never run into before that he's challenged with and he does not know how to handle this. Um, And, uh, you know, I've dealt with a lot of things in my life. I realize when I'm talking to somebody, um, you know, based on, you know, 50 years of being on this earth, of dealing with people and understanding when something in the conversation isn't right. And I normally get the phone call. You know, I'll get the phone call of the person telling me they're suffering from a pest problem. And it's usually that they're biting them. And again, we're going to learn how we're going to basically deal with this because everyone in this industry is eventually going to run into this. I mean, it's just a matter of time um, before you you run into this. I mean, right now the statistics from the CDC and um, other reporting agencies basically say that it's probably you know six people in in about a hundred thousand. Um, you know, so it's not widespread. So this is why there's not a lot of talk about this, but it is a very serious condition that has been going on for way over a um, hundred years um, since it was first described. Um, it, it, from 1902, just to give you a little bit of history on this, from 1902 to 1938, cases describing parasitophobias or dermatological hypochondriasis. Um, This is what it was described as um, during that time. Then after 1938, um, a, a, a doctor by the name of Carl Axel Ekbom in 1938 describes it as delusion of parasitic infestations and associated with tactical hallucinations as well as skin manifestations were present were present in postmenopausal women so this is 
you know, it, it, it is documented. You can look this up. It's documented um, in 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 a in a in an article written by Doctor um, Eggbaum called the called the pre senile delusion of infestation history of psychi- psychiatry. So this is. It could be one of two things. You're either dealing with a person who is having a, a, a psychiatric or psychological problem or you're dealing with a person that's having a dermatological problem. And the problem that we have with this issue when we run up against it is that we're neither medical doctors nor are we psychiatrists nor are we therapists. We're not licensed to diagnose any of these issues. And when you can't, you got to be really sensitive because you're you're dealing with a problem that you're looking for a past that most likely is not there. And as pest control experts, as pest control people, technicians, we can only deal and treat a pest problem when the pest problem is there. We're not authorized to treat people. We can't treat pests on the skin. That's a medical problem. And there are insects that do infest the skin. But however, those are not entomological. Those have to be treated by a doctor. And we're not authorized to do that. And we're not authorized to be inspecting people's skin and touching people and saying, let me see what you have. And it, it, it's, it, you, you, there are gray lines there um, in our industry that we somehow cannot cross. Um, and I, I will get, I've gotten the call where the person, uh, I remember my first call and I'll talk to you about that one. Um, a person calls me and say, listen, I, I got your number from so-and-so um, that told me to give you a call because you can help me with this. I'm having an issue of an insect that's biting me. And I said, okay, you know, you, you're getting bites from insect. That's not uncommon. We, we get calls like that all the time. People getting bitten and you're getting bitten by fleas. They're getting bitten by noceums. They're getting bit by mosquitoes. They're getting bit by, you know, other insects. Um, and, you know, we got to figure out is this something that we can solve for them. So he goes into the history of what happened. I said, okay, when did it first happen? You know, I always, I always go into history. When did this first occur? When did this first happen? When did you first have the encounter with the insect? He says, well, I went uh, into the woods. I went camping and I started, we started getting bitten by these flies. I think they're noceums. Okay. So, you know, chances are you you could be getting, you could have gotten camping and you got bit by noceum. And he says, well, I brought them home and they're now breeding in my house. And I said, well, wait a minute. That right there tells me something else is going on because noceums, you're not going to bring them home. I mean, you can see them on your skin. They're a visible fly. And he had this encounter where he's getting bit all weekend by this and now he's bringing them home. So I said, okay, well, there has to be something else. That's not it. He says, well, I see him flying where I live. Well, here, here's the problem. You, he does live in a lakefront uh, area. Um, but, you know, now he sees insects everywhere. He had a traumatizing experience where he was getting bitten all weekend by something. And he comes home and now he's getting bitten. And this has been happening now for months. Okay. And so I go, I say, okay, let me stop on in and let me see what we can find. So we're there and he's has these monitors. He's already put product. He's already fogged the house. He's already gone through a a certain amount of work trying to resolve this problem. And it's been going on now for about six months. There are monitors everywhere. And he says, well, they're, they're, they're in the monitors. I can see them. Um, I feel them on my skin. As a matter of fact, I'm talking to you right now, and they're biting me. And he lifts up his pants, and he says, ah, right there on my calf, they're biting me. I can feel them. Okay, so I'm looking at his calf, and 
you know, he pulled up his pen. I'm looking at his calf and there's nothing there. I mean, nothing that I can see. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe, you know, I, you know, who knows what he has? I mean, he's, you know, I'm, I'm scratching my head here and looking at all this. I'm looking at the monitors. I look inside the monitors. There's nothing there. I mean, if it was a no see him, you would see it in a monitor. There are no, he doesn't have animals. There's no fleas. Nobody in his house is getting bitten. He's got a little child that's two years old, his wife. There's the the cleaning ladies there. You, have you been getting bit? No. Is the child getting bit? No. Is the wife getting bit? Nobody is getting bit in this house except him. And he's freaking out. And I'm looking through all these monitors and with my lens and I'm there looking all over the place, inspecting, you know, can, you, can, you know what could it possibly be that's biting him? And I find nothing. And then he says, I'm, I'm already, you know, at work. Here's the problem. Here, here is the worst part about this. We couldn't find anything. He's telling me it's on his arm. He's, I can feel it right now on my arm. Now, he works out, and he looks like he bodybuilds, and he's in really good shape, and he shaves his arms. There's nothing crawling on that skin. I can see that skin perfectly. Um, there's nothing there. He's telling me at work that, you know, they basically, he's seen, he works at a hospital. The guy is a medical professional. He's not a doctor, but he's in the medical field. And he, 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 he's had the dermatologist and the doctors look at him. They can't find anything. There are no bites, by the way. No bites. He feels the insect biting him. However, there are no bites. There's no rash. There is no damage on the skin. I said, you know, you've had it looked by a dermatologist. There's nothing in this monitors. I see nothing in your skin. Um, I don't know what I'm treating for and I can't treat. I mean, as, as a pest control professional, we cannot treat. He's already sprayed. He's already fogged. He's already put the, the bombs. He's done everything to that home. What are we going to do? And the problem that we have when we run into a situation like this is that if you treat for something that isn't there, can your state, uh, the Department of Agriculture, for treating a non-site pest or a pest that's not there? Because a lot of states are site states, and a lot of states, you have to have the pest present in order to treat. If you have no pest present, what are you treating for? And if you treat it, you have to put a pest down on the documentation and now you're forging a state document. We Then we get into this, this gray area that once you treat, you're on the hook with that client because he's expecting a relief. And, and if you don't, then what's going to happen if they give you a bad review like you basically took advantage of them? What if the person does have a medical condition? What if the person does have a psychiatric condition and you're treating their home when there's no pest present. You know, I had another one where the lady told me I, I got bed bugs. You know, I got bed bugs. I said, okay, um, you got bed bugs. What have you done? Well, I've been, you know, spraying and I've been doing, it's always, you know, they're always going to try to solve this problem first and they've tried everything and now they're calling a professional to solve it. And I said, okay, well, here's the, you know, the issue with bed bugs. Have you seen a bed bug? And, and this is another person that deals in the medical profession. She is um, a, a nurse that travels to people's home elderly and she takes care of the elderly. And I said, and I caught bed bugs from being, and it's been treated, but I'm still getting the bites. And I said, okay, have you then you call the company back that you've done what well, I've done it myself. I'm trying to solve this problem myself. And I said, that's very dangerous. Now you have a problem with a healthcare worker that got bed bugs and they're getting bitten and they're still going back to other people's home and they're sitting on people's furniture. This is how they get it. They don't understand protocol about going to people's home. And that's another podcast for another day, but what what I'm asking her are diagnostic questions. Said, okay, so she says, I got this, you know, I had to go to the doctor because I got a boil in my back. And 
you know, I, 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 because I got an infection from, you know, the bed bug. I said, okay, well, you probably got it from scratching, but not from the bed bug, but you could have, you know, since I got all these bites all over my, I said, okay, well, you know, before I go out there, before I look at this, send me pictures of the bed bugs. Can you collect them? I says, yeah, they're all over my bed and everywhere. I collect them. She sends me pictures. I can't make out that any of these pictures are bed bugs. I said, listen, none of those pictures that you sent me are bed bugs. I, I, need a, I, need, I need you to send me pictures. If you've got a sample of them and you collect them, they're pretty large. This is what they look. I send her a picture of what a bed bug looks like. I get a package in the mail about a week later full of stuff. And I look at this bag. I put it under a microscope, look at everything that's in there. None of those are bed bugs. You've got, you know, cloth fibers and you have, you know, um, skin and hair. And she's sure that she's getting bit by these bed bugs. I says, have you ever seen a bed bug? Has anybody ever seen the bed bug, done the inspection? And we charge for bed bug inspection. So I tell the client, listen, we can go over there, but that can take me an hour or two. You know, we're going to charge a minimum of $125 to do an inspection because we can't just go over there and spend an hour looking for something that probably isn't there. And I need to know what we're dealing with. And that's our, you know, professional time. So, you know, they don't want to spend the money. So I get a picture of the boil and it turns out it's in a private area of her back. And I'm like, great. Now, now I'm getting these pictures of where this stuff is and there's no bites but you know any case i ended up with this picture and this is the problem people start sending you pictures of things and you know that you're probably not qualified to look at diagnose and and so you get into all of these issues with this but the reality is she's been dealing with this for six months she's afraid to tell her boss that she might have bed bugs because she can get fired um, all of this is going on and nothing, nobody can find anything. And this is where now you, you run into this situation and there's nothing you can do for that person. The problem that we have is there's so many, um, so many diseases, so many medications that people are on today that you don't know if it's an allergic reaction that it's a symptom of of a of a side effect of the medication that they're taking people who are diabetics who have you know the, the syndromes and problems because of diabetes now one of the the diseases that it has been confused with is morgellons disease and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I've got a good article. By the way, I've got a g- lot of great links uh, to a lot of this information because you're going to need it. I'm going to put it in the podcast. But uh, Morgellons disease is is something that has been going back all the way to 1674 when it was first uh, I- I- encountered by... Um, it was a British doctor, Sir Thomas Brown. Um, in a letter, he, he describes a skin disease in French children. Um, he, he's, his, his hairs, which have most uh, amused me, have not been in the face or head, but in the back, and not in men, but children, as, uh, as long ago observed in the edemial this temper of little children in, in, um, in, in a, I'm going to mispronounce this city, and, and it's Languedoc, uh, called the Morgellons. So basically, is the little hairs that break out of the back of the skin, and it believes it, 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 it happens, um, in people and and it's still not understood today. And there's a great article by the National Institute of Health, the history of of Morgellon disease from dilution to definition because it was perceived. And these are actually what appear to be our little fibers under the skin 
that are still not understood how they're forming. But they have to be diagnosed and they're often misdiagnosed to this day. Um, and there's little fibers that just come out and you can see them under a microscope in this document. You can see them um, in, 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 in underneath a microscope how the, the, these little basically, you know, look like little hairs that are growing underneath the skin. Um, and you can't explain why to this day what is causing that condition. Um it could be a, a, the psychiatric. Now, the, the, the clinical, I got it like three good articles in here that you really need to go look at. Uh, epidemiologic, um, histiologic, and molecular features of unexplained uh, dermopathy and delusional infestation is the other article. Um, it tends, the, the, one of the things that they've discovered in this article, it, it, it tends to be more common in Caucasian people and it tends to occur more in women than in men, the delusional infestation. Uh, about two to one to compared to males. It also happens in, in uh, more in elderly women, the delusional infestation. And they're, the things they discuss in the article and why um, you know, it tends to be is a lot of older women you know, have, you know, a, a, it could have a mental illness associated, and it's you know, part of what's being manifested. So again... It, it's a very touchy situation because you, 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 how do you tell a customer, I'm sorry, it's all in your head. You've got to be very tactful of this because they, they, what they, you know, most of the time when I get the call is I need you to believe me. Nobody believes me. I, I, everybody thinks I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. And even when they go and move, and the, the problem with this is they'll start taking furniture out of their house. They'll start taking, you know, the carpeting out. They'll start ripping it out because they are convinced that their home is infested. They'll set stuff on fire outside uh, because they believe their house is infested and they're moving out of their home and they're moving in with their relatives. And now it starts affecting the entire family because... They're convinced they haven't, and they're talking 24-7 about this infestation that they have on their skin. And their relatives are telling them, you need to see a doctor, you need to see a psychiatrist, you need to see this, you need to do that. And they're like, I don't have a mental problem. I don't have a medical condition. I'm convinced. And everything they see around them, they go on the internet. And they'll look up every skin disorder and every insect that could possibly bite them. Some people are seeing the insects coming in and out of their skin. They say, I see them. See them? Do you see them? They're coming out of my skin. I mean, I've had one person stand there and say, I can feel it right now in my arm. Look at my arm. Look. And I'm looking at their arm. This is a person who's very young, by the way. This is in, in his early 30s. Um, telling me they see the insects crawling out. And this is very, very... Um, you know, damaging to their relationships with, you know, with their spouses, with their kids that are in the home. Um, there, there's a big difference between an infestation and a bite and a scab. The problem is when you're in the home, you can't call something on a skin because there's a mark there, a bite. And the first thing that comes out of our mouth could be, oh, yeah, that's a bite. Well, a bite from what? Is it a scab where they've been scratching and and it looks like a bite? And is it an actual infestation where there's only two insects that actually infest the skin? There's no other. And there's a lot of things that be, the people saying, well, I'm infested. My skin is infested with bed bugs. My skin is infested with ticks, with mites. I have bird mites that have infested my skin. Um, all these insects could bite, but they're not going to infest the skin. They're not going to live in your skin. You know, is it a, a bacterial infection or is it an actual infestation? And when it comes to issues of the skin, the problem that we have in, even in the, in the professional medical field, is the lack of entomological knowledge. And the lack of entomological knowledge 
that people have because what they're reading is mostly blogs by non-professionals. If you look at the pages that come up, you'll see a blog by a non-professional person who has taken it upon themselves to write a blog because they need to sell you know, ads. And, and, when you re- and when you look at the blog, there's 15. I mean, you can't read a blog anymore where there's not 16 pieces of ads stuck in between every other line that you're reading. And because of AdSense, because everybody's going AdSense crazy and everybody's become a blogger and everybody become a writer with no real entomological. I mean, when you look at what it takes for us to get an insect in the field that we've never seen, bring it back to our office, put it under a microscope and start going through the anatomy of that insect and understanding insect anatomy alone of understanding under looking at the antenna and counting segments on an antenna to identify what the taxonomy is of that insect to even get close to figuring out what species or what family it is in taxonomy when we have to take uh, most pest control people have never taken a taxonomy course I recommend you highly take a taxonomy course. You take a basic insect anatomy course. And here is a person who's never done any of this and they're going on the web and IDing what they have in their home. 99% of the time, they're wrong. And I'm here, you know, I had one this weekend. Just it wasn't a person that was getting bit, but we did it and we did a basically an initial in the home and they had roaches and they we discovered that they had big headed ant and big headed ant. You know how it got in. It's very simple. The cable guy drilled a hole through the wall. The cable was coming in. There was a gap. Nobody sealed it ever. And they made a nest inside the wall through that cable. And basically you get the frass being kicked out. So they're thinking the customer originally thought they had termites. And we go in there and we look and say we're seeing all kinds of frass and we're seeing American roach poop, uh, excrement, you know, droppings. And we go back a week later, there's ants everywhere dead. We're getting control. Come back a week later after that, we're getting control. And then we go this last time and the tech calls me and says, hey, when you did this initial, because I did the initial, he did all the follow-ups on it. Hey, did you notice all the beetles? And I said, what beetles? I said, the closet where this infestation was is full of beetles. And I'm like, great. Well, what beetle is it? I don't know. I've never seen this before. I said, okay, get a sample, bring them in. You know, it brings in a half a dozen beetles. I pull that open. I'm saying, okay, this is interesting. There was no beetles there before. There's frass coming out. There's no frass. There's no dead ants, but there's beetles now. Put it under a microscope, trying to ID this beetle. Well, I know enough about insect identification. I start taking pictures of every body part with a microscope. I mean, Miley, we're using a microscope to ID this insect, and we don't know what it is. I'm getting pictures of the antenna, counting how many segments in the antenna. I'm getting pictures of the body. I'm getting pictures of the mouth, the, the mandibles, the anus, the feet, the legs, everything to try to ID this insect. I put it online, two guys which follow me um, on on my Facebook page who are pretty much as as expert as you're going to get in identifying insects because this is what they did for a living for like 30-something years apiece. Say, well, it's this, it belongs to this um, family. And I said, okay, great, that gives me something. Um, and then the other one says, yep, I agree. And then he comes back and says, wait a minute, I forgot. I didn't look really good at those antenna. It's in this family. Two experts who are experts looking at the evidence I provided had a difference of opinion. And yet, you know, they were actually right. And when I counted and I looked at it and then I went in and looked at it, well, w- the difference between, here's the difference. One is a dung beetle family, pretty much. And then the other one is a, a um, confused flower beetle. Now, that gives me two different perspectives. If you got a dung beetle outside the home being carried in, 
or if you have or whether this insect is now in the pantry somewhere and I got to go look for it. Do you see the big problem of why insect identification is so important? Because now you're, you're like, what are you spraying for? What are we treating for? We could spray that house all we want. And if we got a confused flower beetle, well, chances are it's in the flower somewhere. If you got a dung beetle, what the heck is a dung beetle doing in a residential environment? I mean, think about that for a minute. It matters to get a positive ID. And if we got nothing that we're finding, what are we treating for? And are we being negligent by treating? Because if we, the, here's the, the goodwill intention of a lot of technicians. You want to help the person. You're thinking, well, why don't I just spray with water because it'll have a placebo effect and they will think that the problem got resolved. Here's the problem. If it's in their head and if it's a dermatological problem, a medical problem, it's not going to go away. They've had to treat people with this, with psychiatric medication, and then all of a sudden, the insects went away. They're no longer, but you're treating and you're spraying, having a, trying to get a placebo effect. And what you're going to end up doing is that person's going to be calling you every week saying, I still have bugs after you sprayed. And worst of all that you go online and they give a negative review and all the repercussions and then, you know, whatever could happen by the family because you charge them for a service that they didn't need and you took advantage of them and here you are trying to help. You see how this could all fall apart on you by dealing with this? The, the best thing you could do is saying, listen, I can't find anything. Be honest. I can't find anything. And, you know, recommend that they see a dermatologist. It could be a skin disorder. People will most likely accept a, a medical disorder or a skin disorder or something. It could be a plant that they got a rash from. And you can't ID that than telling the person it's in their head because that's not going to go very well. So what do people describe? Well, they describe a process known as formication. Now, that is formication with an M, okay? Not with an N. Um, so, and, and this is described, we get this from ants, uh, for, for, Missy, for Missy DA, creeping or crawling sensation stinging and biting it's it's a sensation they get on their skin i had a friend of mine who is a diabetic who told me you know called me once and says man i'm getting bit in my in my unit he lives alone he's you know he's in his 50s late 50s he lives alone he's diabetic um and he's having bite sensations Man, I spent an hour in his place tearing that place apart, looking for bed bugs, looking through the mattress with a lens, every little speck that I found on his skin, on his hands. I show me where it's biting you. And he's, I've got, you know, there's no apparent rash. There's no apparent bites. But he's having, I said, listen, you, you might need to go to a doctor and, and make sure it isn't you know, from your diabetes that you're feeling this for, from medication that you're taking. Um, you know, it's happened several times. So is it, you know, that's the sensation that they describe. So there are no visible pests. Now, what you got to understand about pests is that there's no such thing as an invisible pest. Okay. It's an insect. If it's a mite, if it belongs in one of those two families, they could be microscopic, but they're not going to be invisible. You should be able to find them. A lot of the, a lot of insects that bite, like mosquitoes, bed bugs, ticks, fleas, midges, which are noceums, they're mostly outdoor. Um, some spiders, most spiders are not going to bite you if if you don't you know mess with them too much. And, and finding biting spiders is, is rare. Um, you know, how many times have I seen a person tell me, well, I got diagnosed by my doctor that I got bitten, um, uh, by a brown recluse spider. I said, did you ever find the brown recluse spider? No. 
How does your doctor know that you got a brown recluse spider? Well, he says it was. He's a medical doctor. And see, the problem is there are no brown recluse spiders in Florida, at least not in South Florida. And she lives down here and she hasn't traveled outside of the U.S. You know, I mean, I ask people all the time, have you been traveling? Where did you go? Where have you been? Because I need to know if they, you know, got bit somewhere else and they're still just getting the skin reaction now from some place that they were. Um, you know, we got mites that attack humans. I mean, I've gotten bitten by bird mites. There's rodent mites. I had a situation just a couple of months ago where a family is calling me saying their, their children are getting bitten in a bedroom. Um, and this is a mobile home. And I'm saying, okay, great. Um, you know, probably got fleas. You know, the underneath cats go underneath and you know, rats and all that. And you get fleas and it says, no, there's no fleas. I don't have any pets. I go in and I said, where are they getting bit? Well, it's only the girls that are getting bitten. Okay, well, let's go to the girl's room and take a look. And uh, sure enough, I said, you know, look at her arm. She's got all these little tiny bites. Um, and I said, yep, that looks like, you know, could be bites. So where are they getting? Bit? Only here. Okay. So I go to round, I go outside Sure enough, in that corner of that bedroom, in the soffit, there was a bird's nest in there. And that bird's nest was huge. I mean, it took about three feet one way and three feet the other. Uh, there were birds living in there, and so we had to take that nest out. Um, once you take the nest out, you know, basically we, we, we sprayed that area with a 25B product to get a quick knockdown. Um, and basically, once you get rid of the bird's nest and you get rid of the site, you know, th these guys will die because they can't live off of humans. So it was a temporary situation. It doesn't happen. It's been going on for weeks since they moved in because that bird nest has been there forever. Uh, so there were mites in there. But once we got rid of the bird nest, we took it out. You know, I mean, it filled up almost a, 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 a 13 gallon bag of of completely. I mean, it was a big nest. But that's it, you know, so things like that can happen. You know, then you got scabies, scabies mites. Um, they can burrow into the skin. Um, however, they can't, you know, live there. I mean, you're not going to get that infestation. Um, it does have uh, itching and rash. There is, but it's a medical problem. It needs to be taken care of by a medical doctor. You can't treat the skin for, for scabies mites. Um, there, there, there is, you know, chiggers. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the larvae of a harvest mite. It doesn't happen in the winter. They're mostly outdoor. They don't infest homes. So people say, you know, I've got chiggers in my home. Um, you know, you went by, you know, you walked, I had a guy tell me once, Oh, I, I found out what was happening to my skin is chiggers. Um, you know, I said, you know, did a doctor diagnose that? And he says, no, but I says, you don't live, you live in a condo. You don't go through the woods. You know, if you bathe yourself and, you know, you can pretty much get rid of it with soap and water. And they're so small that, you know, you really can't be seen. So I don't think you have sugars. You really need to go to a doctor and have them ID that. Um, and then you have finally lice. You know, head lice, body lice, pubic lice. This happens because somebody had close personal contact with somebody else. They slept in the wrong place with the wrong person. Um, you know, bedding, toilet seats, uh, undergarments. But this is not a pest control function. You can't treat a person for head lice. You can't treat them for body lice. A doctor has to do that. A dermatologist has to do that. These are things that are outside of our expertise. You know, complications uh, from medication. You know, psychiatric depression, schizophrenia, dementia. These are medical conditions. We can't treat this. Diabetes. Um, jaundice can cause, can, uh, you know, certain cancers can cause um, itching, drug use. Here's, here's a big one. 
cocaine and amphetamine use, um, people being on meth. You know, cops report this all the time. People are saying the bugs are all crawling all over them while they're under the influence of drugs. Some NSAIDs, steroids, um, can cause these problems. It requires a physical exam by a doctor. Do not, by any means, go examining people's body, you know, looking for stuff. That's not something you can really do. Um, that could cause some serious problems and some serious liabilities um, later on, especially if the person does have a mental disorder and then starts accusing you of something else. Do you see the problem? We're trying to help people. We're trying to do the right thing. And by doing the right thing, you know, it, it then it bites you in the butt. And, and you need to take precautions. Um, you're going in a home, Hey, you know, you might need to 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 take precautions also on what you wear. Uh, you got to look at PPE. PPE that's not on label when you're not treating stuff. I mean, what PPE is on an inspection report that you're going into homes to do certain inspections? You know, I, I mean, I if I'm going to do a flea job and it's bad and the person's telling me they're getting bitten bad, you know, I'm using a Tyvek suit with booties. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I've, I've had one guy walk into a room where the, they had the, they, it was a pool house and they were allowing all the cats from the neighborhood to come in and feed and they had put the food inside. And my guy walks in there and he starts screaming like, ah, you can hear, ah, and what happened? He says, they're biting me all over. He walks out of there, you know, he's got covered in fleas. Um. You know, these are the things that, you know, you don't get prepared for um, in, in pest control training. But this is the stuff that needs to be discussed, um, the training that needs to happen on how you properly deal with this. And I, I hope that this podcast helps a lot of you um, who have never done this to understand that you have to search for an insect. If there isn't an insect, there's nothing for you to treat that you don't go treating something that isn't there to try to help people um, because you think if you do it, it's going to have a placebo effect. They're going to be satisfied. They're going to be happy. And 99% of the time, that is not the case. It actually gets worse. So, you know, look at all this. Look at the information. Read the links that I put there. They're, these are darn good articles, uh, scientific articles on a lot of this to make you sharp. Um, you know, I, I can't go into all that in detail because that would take three podcasts just to go through all that literature. But read the links. I'm going to put them in there. Uh, follow along. Uh, and we're going to put this up uh, today, hopefully. And, um, and you'll be able to get all this information you need to start preparing yourself if you've never encountered this uh, to deal with this. And until next time, you guys have a spectacular day. Thank you for listening to the Pest Geek Podcast. If you have enjoyed the Pest Geek Podcast, please give us a rating, write a review, or subscribe to the channel. You can join the Pest Geek Society by visiting pestgeekpodcast.com. Thank you for listening. See you next time.